everyone, welcome back to the Falcon Lady. I hope you're having a wonderful and cozy day wherever you are because I am cold. <laughs> <laughs> it is nearing winter here in Canada and today we're chit-chatting about how we refit or how we winterize the Muse. So we're going to dive into some of the upgrades and remodeling that Team Feathers gets. So let's get started. Come on, let's go. Let's go. So you remember earlier on in the summer we were talking about some of the things we're going to do to make the Muse a little more solid, a little bit warmer, a little more secure for Team Feathers, particularly in winter time. And what we originally planned to do was use 1x6 cedar siding, which has all kinds of natural benefits to it. Uh, among them the fact that it's uh, water repellent, insect repellent because of the oils in the cedar wood. And what we decided to do instead is go with what's called an engineered wood product. Now this particular product is made right here in British Columbia. In fact, it's made in Dawson Creek. And I've got a little piece of it here so we can see what it looks like when it's first made. Now, we can see on the back side, this is made out of chipped up poplar. And then certain resins and uh, other additives are put into the raw mixture and it's pressed at very high heat and pressure into a product that's actually stronger than the poplar it was derived from. The, it comes with a neutral, sort of a, a bland kind of beige uh, um, primer on the outside, the outward facing side. And um, what we decided to do is go with B grade because we didn't really need A grade siding for the Muse. The A grade is usually reserved for siding of homes. Um, now there's a lot of really interesting things about this product. In addition to being stronger than the trees that it came from, it has something called Beauregard ZB in it. And what that does is it protects the wood from rot, from mold. It also repels insects, so you don't get bug chew from carpenter ants or depending on where you are, say things like termites. They're turned off by it, doesn't taste very good. Um, and you can paint it any color you like. Now what we opted to do is go with a beautiful clean white exterior wood stain and uh, the benefits of this among other things is I don't have to touch it up on a fairly regular basis like you have to with paint. Now we went with white because particularly in summertime the Muse can get a little bit warm and this is going to reflect some more heat. Now underneath this, as you've seen earlier on in the video, in the steps that I've shown you, there is a vapor barrier between the cedar 
fence panels and the engineered wood product that we have up here, the panel that we have up here. And that's just going to keep some of the moisture away from the underlying cedar fence panel, which is going to be more susceptible to moisture damage than this stuff is. Uh, we've got cedar strapping here, and this is what we're attaching the engineered wood panels to, right? So um, probably remembering before when you've seen the, the muse in the background, we didn't have the strapping or the uh, moisture barrier. Now, normally, moisture barrier is all one sheet, and you are trying to prevent moisture from getting in anywhere. The hope is that because we brought it right down, and you can see where some water has pooled, actually, right here. We've probably had a little bit of snow fell right against this ledge, and it's melted because it's just starting to warm up. And now we've got water. So that now has been kept off the cedar fence panel. Once we've got the engineered wood panel on top of this, the idea is that the moisture barrier will pretty much come right up to the lip of this strapping. And again, protecting the underlying cedar fence, fence panel uh, while also providing a really solid attachment point for, for the panels themselves. So that's what it looks like. Uh, it's really neat, nifty stuff. We've actually got it up in here too, um, underneath the metal roofing panels to guide the water away so that it's not dripping down into the breezeway. And likewise, when we, whenever we go into the mews, if you've never noticed before, same thing again. We've got the moisture barrier underneath the metal roofing panels to draw the water away so we don't get a lot dripping through. And you can see what happens. We actually missed the rafter when we were screwing in, and it's allowed moisture onto that that beam and a little bit back here too mostly on this one so one of the projects one of the touch-up projects is to get something like uh, a flex seal or a, a really good uh, rubber product that that's, that comes out as a, as a liquid as a gel then solidifies as it dries and that will put a stop to any water coming through and channeling through into the muse okay Great. awesome all right, so if we walk around, you can see that we're more than halfway through putting up the new paneling. Really, really excited about this. Got a little bit of touch up to do, but now that the panels are up, I can do that. Uh, it will circle all the way around. And now over top of these fence panels, as these, these engineered panels are, the structure is a lot stronger, okay? Um, and really, I mean, all those, those knot holes have been covered up by the uh, vapor barrier and the paneling. Um, what we're also going to do is the front panels, where we've got these shorter fence panels, those are going to be filled in with this engineered wood product, as are the outside of the doors. And we'll be filming that very shortly and popping that into, if not this video, then certainly a, a follow-up one. <laughs> Hashtag postcard video. Okay, now the other thing that we're going to do, let's just go on inside for a second. Yes, Mo, I know. Bernie is a terrible. Okay, so like I was saying, we're going to be putting the uh, engineered wood product in here and here and on here. Now, in these window spaces that we've got here, I'm going to be using clear coroplast. So this will be an insert that we place in for the winter time to cut the cold winds coming into the muse. We've still got air circulation because it's not hermetically sealed in there. Uh, so we're going to get air turnover. But what this is going to do is it's going to massively block the cold coming in from sort of the west uh, and, and the northwest. We get most of our wind coming against the back of the muse. So you know, that's, that's really huge, getting the, the paneling on the back there. So the clear coroplast will allow the feathered ones to a certain extent to be able to see outside. Now, you'll recall one of the experiments we're going to do is we're going to have great big green mats on the floor like the one that Mojave has. And we're going to put block perches into the ground. And we're going to have Halo and Scirocco tied out 
in the middle of the floor of their muse on their block perch there. A, to stop them jumping around and destroying their feathers like they did last year. We're not going to have any more of that. And B, to uh, limit the um, ways in which they can, they can make a mess, right? Because having those large green mats underneath the, the block perches means we're gathering up, up most of the shite. We're able to take it right out of the muse and clean it. This is going to keep the smell down. This is going to keep any contamination of the pebble beds down. And it's going to mean that we're hardly having to spot wash at all. The less I have to do that sort of thing, particularly in cold, cold weather, where ice is going to build up underneath the pebble bed, the better. Okay. Now, the other thing that we're going to do. So, another thing we're going to do for springtime, once they're able to go back onto the half moon perches, is we're going to put plain white coroplast on the fence panel behind the perch. So if they feel inclined for whatever, whatever reason to uh, be jumping up and down, they're not going to be rubbing against the, the rough surface of the fence panel with their feathers. And as we've said before, this is a big factor in how Halo destroyed his feathers this past year, and I'm not going to have that happen again. Now, something that we're having to, or that we're bringing in to uh, make the, the Muse a little more comfortable. Like I say, we're going to have those clear coroplast windows on the door and on here over the mesh, and they'll be removable, obviously, is we're going to bring some heaters in, some Muse heaters in from Westfield Falconry. We'll put the link down below. The idea here isn't to have the Muse be a sauna. That's not healthy for those guys. It isn't. They're built to deal with weather. However, we get here at altitude, because we're on top of an old mountain, like I keep saying, it gets cold. And it's been colder the winters that we, since we've been here um, than what is normal uh, since we've arrived. We've, we've routinely had cold snaps into the low minus 30s, which is presumably uh, unusual. It's supposed to be like minus 17 is the coldest it's supposed to get around here. So what we want to do is we want to mitigate how cold it gets in here. Now, once this is all sealed up, right, allowing for the fact that there's some air circulation, the heater, the, its only purpose is just to knock the cold down. So if we can keep it to zero degrees in here, or even just at minus one, minus two, maybe a degree, half a degree above zero, so that it's pleasant enough, they can stay out here overnight. Right? and they're not coming into the house, um, which I don't mind doing, because safety, safety, safety. However, it's healthier for them to be outside if they can. It helps their circadian rhythms to be in sync with the natural order of things. Um, so we just want to be able to mitigate the cold. Now, uh, a good example that I've seen of this is, uh, again, it's at uh, Jemima Center, the ICBP in Gloucester. And they have a uh, hot water heat that runs through the banks of mews that you get through. When you go through the front gate, there's banks of mews on either side of you. And the whole weathering yard, of course, is right there. It's beautiful. Um, their doors are this thick to the mews, fully insulated. And then when you open them up in the morning, you get this waft of heat, right, from the hot water heat. Now, I don't necessarily know that, that that's necessary to get that warm. Uh, what I expect is probably Jemima uh, made that decision because, of course, in Britain you're getting wet cold. It's that, that insidious cold that gets into your joints and no matter what you do, you just can't seem to get warm. Here we get dry cold. And, of course, you can rid yourself of that very quickly, right? So we're going to try this experiment and see how good these little heaters are at mitigating the cold. And... We might have to tweak it a little bit over the winter. We're not sure. It's, it's going to be sort of a, a learning experience for us as well. But um, if we have to make adjustments, if we have to get in secondary heaters, let's say the, having one in each muse is just not quite enough and I'm still having to bring them in fairly often, then we know for the following winter, okay, we'll take this extra step and that should put us over the top. But we're going to keep you posted through all of this to, to show you how it's going. I might even put a, a couple of thermometers on the walls in here so that we can film that and see what kinds of uh, results we're getting. We'll be logging how 
things go with these little heaters from Westfield. And, uh, and like I say, we'll keep you posted on that. So if you have any questions about the retrofit that we're, that we're about to do, um, you know what to do. Questions, comments down below. Uh, suggestions, if you've uh, taken steps like that, if you're in a similar climate to us, if you've had to take steps along those lines, let us know what you guys did to, uh, to make things a little more comfortable for your feathered ones. And uh, subscribe! We love subscribers here, guys! Bring on the subscribers! And then this tidal wave of people fall on top of me. Just visualize that in your mind. Um, well, maybe let's not do that. That would be... I, hospitalization fun. comes to mind. Um, but subscribe, like us, share us with your friends on Facebook and Instagram. Come on over to Instagram and check out the photographs that we're always putting up there. Leah does a great job of putting awesome photos up there. Uh, little snippets of uh, Mo screaming his full head off and things like that. Um, and yeah, keep us posted about what you're up to with your, your progress with your mentors and uh, as you start the apprenticeship programs that you're in all over the world. Um, we'd love to hear about things like what are regulations like in Australia or Austria or Ecuador. We'd love to hear about that kind of stuff. Is there any regulation? You know, is it kind of the Wild West where you are? Or is it really heavily uh, um, regulated like it is in Australia, for example? Bring on all that stuff. We'd love to have discussions with you about it. Okay, so hopefully that was interesting and informative and we'll keep you posted as we complete this job. And uh, you know what to do, tune in next Sunday. We'll be here, same time, same station. In the meantime, be safe wherever you are. Cheers.